And so, hi, I'm uh, Jason Talley, and uh, with uh, Brad Jardis here, my legal agent. Former legal agent. Right. I'm your former legal agent. Because uh, I now have nothing hanging over my head. Uh, it started in September, for me at least, it started in September of 2011, where um, I had a camera. It was the size of my thumb. It was uh, clipped to my belt, and uh, a couple of bailiffs uh, assaulted me, and uh, they put me in a cage for three days uh, because of that. And so um, since then I've had uh, bail restrictions and uh, today the state, uh, well, the court dropped the charges, right? Yes, yes, yeah. the court, uh, today the court ordered the dismissal of the two remaining charges because it was last week that the state uh, dropped the contempt charge. Um, but what's interesting about the state dropping the contempt charge is that when the, uh, when the state prosecutes contempt of court, it effectively is doing that because the judiciary is its client. So I wonder what was said uh, behind closed doors, uh, of course, with attorney-client privilege between the uh, assistant county attorney John Webb and judicial branch, the judicial branch officials who wanted uh, the contempt prosecution. Um, but the charges were dismissed today uh, by the court over the objection of the state because the state um, didn't file a required notice for a Class A misdemeanor. And because the uh, required notice hasn't been filed, but um, uh, Tally asserted his right to a jury trial, there was no legal authority for the uh, court to hold a jury trial on a Class B misdemeanor. Um, the state asked that uh, that you waive your right to, uh, uh, or yeah, waive your right to a jury trial and have a bench trial. Um, but we said no to that because you have a right to a jury trial. So it left them in a position where they, they couldn't have a jury trial on a Class B misdemeanor for you. So right. if I did waive my rights, it would have been a Class B misdemeanor, which would have meant no jail time at all. No jail time at all, and uh, the potential for just a fine. But we still pushed for a, uh, a jury, and uh, that's when they had to drop everything. Yeah, I mean, well, uh, the assistant county attorney, he said you have three charges. Uh, ex excuse me, you have three options, but you actually had four, and the fourth one was just to dismiss it. We asked for its dismissal uh, with prejudice, which means double jeopardy attaches so the case can't be tried again. Uh, the judge denied that, so technically the state could recharge you in district court, um, but I would suggest that that would be a very bad idea if they did. Well, um, well, thank you so much for taking the case, yeah, first of all. I'm curious, though, why did you decide to, uh, you spent a lot of time, uh, a lot of money, you know, gasoline going back and forth. Uh, why did you decide to do it? Well, um, I, you know, I've said before that there is some activism uh, in, the, in the keen area that I don't like. Um, you know, some things that, that generate bad public opinion. But what I can't stand even more is when uh, government officials uh, play fast and loose with the constitutional rights that people are supposed to have. Um, having sworn three oaths to the New Hampshire Constitution myself and uh, three oaths to the Federal Constitution, um, you know, although I think some of the laws that exist in society today should be, should be different, I still think that government officials who swear an oath to this document need to follow it. And what happened here was Adamo Freeman of Keene got arrested for asking constitutionally protected questions, and as a result, your rights got taken away and you got prosecuted. And that's why I told the judge today, you can see it in the video, I told the judge that, you know, we maintain this is public corruption. Because you can't take away rights from people because one of your own tells a lie. Um, but of course, none of this stuff is going to make it to the Supreme Court now because the case is over. Um, obviously, like I said, if the state recharges him, excuse me, it's not going to be very good for the state. But So yeah, so it can't go to the Supreme Court now because of this uh, paperwork error. Yes, because of the paperwork error, um, your case is over, your freedom's restored, your bail conditions are gone, and uh, hopefully next time they'll be a little more careful uh, about taking people's constitutional rights away when one of their own breaks the law. Well, haven't I already been punished uh, three days in, uh, in a cage and then uh, all this time you know, spending this, all the bail conditions? Well, I think you have, you probably have a very good lawsuit. Uh, uh, a lawsuit probably against the Sheriff's Department, maybe a lawsuit in state court against the judicial branch, and I hope you talk to a lawyer who knows a lot, about more, uh, a lot more about that than I do because uh, this type of stuff is unacceptable. And just, you know, a little egg on their face for them losing this case, uh, to me, doesn't seem like enough punishment for all the stuff that you've had to go through. So, um, I thought it was great that uh, everybody came out today. There were so many people from all over the Shire that uh, came to support myself, you, uh, just 
the cameras, you know, transparency. Yeah, so. I mean, New Hampshire's own constitution, part one, article eight, says that magistrates, which are judges, and public, you know, public agents are uh, accountable to the people at all times, at all times. And today, what that means, you know, with the media today, that means cameras. And if you don't like being filmed, either don't go out in public or don't become a public official. It's, it's that simple. And, and the first Federal Circuit Court of Appeals has spoken very loudly that in, in New Hampshire, it is a federally guaranteed constitutional protection to be able to film public officials in public. And the state, whether they like it or not, are gonna, they're going to have to follow it. Cool. Uh, so there were three charges going in, and then a few days before, the contempt of court charge was dropped, and there yes. were two remaining, resisting arrest and... Disorderly conduct. What Jason was arrested for was violating the order not to have a camera. So he was arrested for violating the order in contempt of court. When, where does the disorderly con It seems like they're saying like one thing constitutes multiple things. This is another problem that the state would have had if it went to trial today. Bailiffs cannot enforce indirect criminal contempt without a judge's order. So a bailiff cannot arrest somebody. A bailiff can't look at a court order and then look at somebody and say, oh, this person's violating the court order. The order has to come from the judge. So what, what the state did in this case is the bailiffs arrested Jason for uh, what they were calling disorderly conduct for you know, walking into a building with a camera on his belt. Well, I have filmed in all different types of courts throughout New Hampshire, and Cheshire County has been giving me the most grief, so I'm glad this is over at least. It's pretty obvious that the state is not policing itself. I mean, a judge lies on camera, nothing happens to him. In fact, he's cleared by, by a report from the uh, Sullivan County attorney, and then, you know, not only is he cleared, but your rights get taken away. You know, this, this just doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. It's not the way the justice system was supposed to work. So, yeah. Well, I couldn't find justice in those courtrooms, so when I <laughs> wanted justice, I called on Jardis. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. So thank you so much. Thanks, guys, for filming.